In 1883, Mary Mallon left Ireland aged just 15 to seek her fortunes in America. There, she quickly got to work as a cook for New York City's wealthiest families. In the summer of 1906, she was hired by Charles Henry Warren, a wealthy banker with a holiday home in Oyster Bay, Long Island. However, their holiday quickly turned south when six of the 11 members came down with typhoid fever. Victims of typhoid could suffer a fever, abdominal cramps, abdominal distension, intestinal hemorrhaging, and, in 10% of cases, death. The source of infection was water and food contaminated with excrement. Today, it's common knowledge to wash your hands after using the bathroom, but back then, that really wasn't the case. Immunization wouldn't roll out until 1911, and antibiotic treatment wouldn't become readily available until 1948. By 1907, in the New York area alone, 3,000 people have been diagnosed, which you would think would be a massive deal, but not yet, at least. It wasn't until the virus hit Oyster Bay, where it affected the affluent, that it became mainstream news. And so, George Soper was hired by the Warrens to investigate. His search quickly led him to Mary Mallon. Her unlikely partner in crime was peached ice cream. The cold dish merely froze the copious amounts of bacteria instead of burning them, which would have been the case in hot food. As the investigation continued, Soper began snooping around Mary's employment history. He discovered that of the eight families she'd worked for, seven of them came down with typhoid. Soper had a theory. Maybe she was the first ever documented healthy carrier of Salmonella typhi. He would need proof Mary did not play ball, constantly denying Soper stool samples. He eventually needed the help of the New York City Health Department and even the NYPD. Oh, don't worry, she wasn't arrested, just held on a desolate island in isolation for two years. North Brothers, to be exact. This was a bit of a moral quandary. There was an obligation to Mary's human rights, but also the obligation to the general public to keep them infection free. People had been held in quarantine before, but only people who had clear signs of sickness. Mary appeared perfectly healthy. Compromises were struck up. Doctors suspected the bacteria were coming from her gallbladder and offered to release her if they removed it. Mary refused that deal, but did promise she'd never work as a cook again. Five years later, she broke that promise and remained at large until 1915. She infected 25 people at the Sloan Maternity Hospital in Manhattan, infecting doctors, patients and nurses, two of whom died. The NYPD took her back to North Brothers Island, again, where she'd spend the rest of her life. Upon Mary's death some 20 years later, the doctors seized the opportunity to inspect Mary's gallbladder. And what did they find? Live typhoid bacteria living in her remains. The case of typhoid Mary is a conundrum that still intrigues us today. Was she the villain or was she the victim? Were the authorities right to violate one woman's individual liberties if it meant protecting the general population? And could they have done more to educate Mary on the dangers of what she was doing? If you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe, or leave a comment below.